Hello and welcome to The Gist. I'm your host, Chris Vetrano, and I'm here every week to break down all the things that are happening across pop culture. And for the last three weeks, we have been covering the explosive Vanderpump Rules reunion. The three-parter, it came to a conclusion last night, and here we go. I think James Kennedy said it best right at the top of the episode, right before Raquel comes out. He says, what a finale of the finale. And I can't think of a better way to describe it. Guys, I have so many notes. We have so much to cover. This was exactly what I needed it to be. Well, not exactly, and we'll get to that in a minute, because for the last three months, as you know, we they've been teasing that there's some explosive revelation that's going to come out that's going to change the cast's opinions, and they needed to decide where cast could go from here. Um, so we've all been eagerly awaiting those last five minutes of last night's episode, and we'll get to that. But first... We start off at the moment that Raquel is coming out. So again, reminder that Sheena has a restraining order, so they have to, as Andy called it, play the dosi do and move Sheena away. They have everybody coming out. It's or, or Raquel coming out. Everybody just sort of waiting in the wings on the stage. And as she comes out, it's like, I mean, you could feel it. I felt as though the TV was just like about to explode because, and again, I'm watching this on Peacock and I know some of you like are watching it live. I ha I had to wait until 6 a.m. this morning to watch it because I can't watch it without, I can't imagine some of these lines bleeped out. I just can't. I needed to see it all. I needed the supersized version. I want every moment as packed in as possible. And so, you know, my TV is like exploding as she's walking out because I can feel the tension. And, uh, you know, the best part is James is like laughing and he's making all these faces and it's wild. It's wild. And it was amazing. And uh, James came out on top for me. I I just couldn't couldn't love his reactions more in this reunion. And um, we kind of get right into it. Obviously, Andy acknowledges the elephant of we got to talk about Scandival. But we have to also talk about how we got there. And so we start at the at Katie's girls trip. Um, so it starts in Vegas. So we discuss Oliver. We talk about, you know, the uh, Lake Havasu moments. And, you know, Raquel's like, yeah, I was very uncomfortable on that trip. And, you know, everyone's like, we were being nice to you. And we were like being like supportive of you. And, you know, and Andy brings up, you know, in the, in the car ride when Raquel had her anxiety attack. And she's, you know, sobbing uncontrollably and how they all kind of comforted her and came to her side. And she, of course, um, you know, was just in a place that she was like, well, you guys also then attacked me right after that. So Lala had to, you know, defend her comments and, you know, the whole, she, you know, Lala was not great on that trip at the dinner, of course, but Lala was defending her actions and saying, like, you forgave me in the moment. Like, we had a conversation, you forgave me. And then when it when you needed to come after me for that again, you used it to your benefit to come after me again. And so, you know, that got, um, that got explosive. And then, uh, you know, Raquel starts kind of going on down this, like, you know, I get it. I was selfish. And, uh, oh boy, her saying selfish, it just launched everything off from that moment on because then everyone on the stage is just yelling at each other. They are going for her. And then Ariana is like, selfish, you need a better word. She's like, diabolical, demented, subhuman. Like, and I love, like, you know, Raquel just... I, there's nothing there. There's nothing behind those eyes for her. And it's kind of wild. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is, but she, she's crazy. And she's like literally hearing somebody say all of these things to her who she has hurt so badly. And her response is like, well, actually my emotions are human. And, you know, everyone's like, oh no, they're not human. And they're just going off again. And uh, Sandoval then starts to jump in to defend her. And, you know, I love it because, and, you know, it's become a meme of like the way that Lala is pointing at him and James is like going at him. It's like, those two are so incredible. And, you know, everyone's just going and they're like, shut up, shut up. I love that they just were shutting Sandoval down. And, you know, one of the things that I thought, too, is, like, you really notice, like, the cast has really turned up the heat on this episode because it's, like, the minute that Raquel is on that stage, everyone's emotions are so much higher. I mean, yes, they were mad at Sandoval, but, like, they were 
out of control. So like they were just uh, everything, everything was on 10, everything that came out of their mouths. Anytime Raquel or Sandoval said something, it was like attack. And I mean, and they deserved it. They deserved all of the attacks that they had, but, um, but then, you know, Andy's trying to like bring it back into the season and I loved, you know, he's like re uh, hashing. He's like, you know, that conversation that you had with Ariana about their intimacy issues. He's like, is, was kind of diabolical. And I just loved that he used Ariana's word. It's like, okay, Andy just showed hashtag team Ariana in that moment. Um, because he's, and then it's like, yeah, it's true. And then, you know, they're watching the, we, we get the clip and, you know, even Lisa was like, oh, that was crazy. She's like, I can't believe, you know, you're sleeping with her boyfriend and you're saying these things to her. And it's like, it's so, it's so crazy. And, you know, then they, they, you know, flashed to the Raquel one-on-one. -on -one. I thought we were going to get more of this Raquel one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, I don't know what you guys thought. I, I could have watched like an entire 60 minute special just on her sit down. I'm like, did they only sit down for 15 minutes? Because I think we've seen a total of, like maybe three minutes of footage from that interview like and maybe it's just because the last five minutes were so big of of more of like raquel being honest and the one-on-one -on -one that she had with andy she was still kind of like you know saying her lies and her like agreed upon storylines but yeah they they didn't show a lot of that footage um but you know andy's kind of like you know why did you have this conversation with her did you want her to were you trying to convince her or tom to like break up with one of the others and she was like you know i just ultimately wanted him to decide if he was happy because as his friend first and foremost that's what like i cared about was her was that he was truly happy and you know that they go back to the stage with all the cast and she kind of reiterates the same sort of sentiment but about ariana and she's like you know at the at the moment i was like truly just trying to see if Ariana was happy and Ariana jumps in and she's like, which the answer was yes. And uh, since it was, and then you still continue to fuck my boyfriend. So fuck yourself with a fucking cheese grater. I mean, and I might get that tattooed on my body. If anyone's in, let me know because fuck yourself with a fucking cheese grater is, oh, wow. There's so, there's so much happening with that phrase, but Ariana was on fire and again i don't know how you would have watched that scene because there was so many fucks that i don't know how you would have like seen it if you didn't see it uncensored they would have just i mean i wonder uh if that was one of the scenes that they like had to cut out for the bravo version because i don't even know how it would have just been like one long like beep um but it was it was amazing raquel then goes to her kind of in defense she's obviously getting like attacked in this moment so her response to it is well james and lala can't talk and because they fucked and you know that's when lala and we've seen it a million times now in the in the trailers lala's like i wasn't your best friend like i hated you and i now know that i hated you for a reason and so I, yeah i did that but Ariana was your best friend. She was supporting you in everything that you did. And at the end of the day, like you like fucked her man. And that is not like the same thing. It's not at all the same thing. And so then they, that kind of like led to them kind of revisiting this moment and the word mistress and the moment where Lala has the conversation after Raquel has hooked up with Oliver and we learn that Oliver is still married. Uh, that's when she's like, you know, you're not a mistress. Like he treated you bad. You were the victim and all of this. Um, so they go back to that conversation a little bit and you know, it, it, it was a little bit lost because obviously Lala regrets that conversation because she's like, well, you clearly were doing something else. Like even while you were with Oliver, you were still like with Tom. So it's like, there's so much that's so to unpack in that moment. But the one thing is that there was a little bit of parallels with Lala and it's not necessarily on the James example, because I think that them, you know, they kind of are squashing that example, but in the Randall situation, which is what Andy was trying to get to is like, you started with Randall as his mistress. And she was like, I wasn't his mistress because she, he was lying to me. He told me that they were not together anymore and I was with them and so she was drawing the parallels between the Oliver situation and Raquel and 
I think that like, but what she kind of ended up doing is by saying that she was really close to Randall's ex and she's like, she's one of my nearest and dearest is that is where it's like, well, actually then you are sort of a little bit more parallel to the Raquel situation because if Randall's ex is one of your nearest and dearest and you guys were both like, he was still with her while you were with her or with him, it, it does kind of draw some parallels. So I feel like she probably should have left that like little tidbit out. Um, but you know, everyone's again on 10. So a lot of things are coming out, but the one thing is, as we're talking about this Oliver thing, I really noticed like Lisa's like going hard for Oliver and like defending Oliver. It's like, I love his mother. I love him. You know, he was separated. I know he was separated and you know, they, maybe he backslid and maybe he did this and she is like, I mean, speaking for him and he's not there, which maybe is her defense. Maybe that's why she was doing it. But it did make me like kind of question and I took a step back and I was like, you know, why is she going so hard on the women? Like she is, no, she's not going hard. Um, she is hard on the women. She is like yelling at Lala and being calling Lala out. And, you know, she's really like, she does the same thing with like Sheena and she's done things with Katie in that way. And she does like, she's very hard on them. Like she is not very forgiving. And we, we've already seen her earlier in the reunions is that she's like really defending Tom Sandoval. And in this moment, it's like, Oliver still did something wrong. Like he didn't disclose like the full situation ship of whatever was going on with his wife. And she's like, you know, defending him to, especially like she's defending men's cheating actions. It really makes me wonder what she has in her past that she has forgiven Ken for, because she is like really coming to their defense on the cheating stuff. And it's very strange. Um, and then, you know, and I, the other thing is that, like, during all of this stuff, we're getting, like, similar to when we had Raquel in the 100-yard uh, hundred away trailer. We're now seeing Sheena's facial reactions. And, I mean, I could have, like, watched those on pause for five minutes because they were epic. Um, she was giving us some real face. But what I loved in this one, too, is that every once in a while they would just cut to what's happening in the trailer. It would be this like very dramatic thing happening, this huge explosive fight happening on the stage. And then they would cut to like Brock walking in and talking about his haircut. And then at one point it like cuts to uh, Ali and Sheena in the trailer. And Ali's like, oh my God, I freaked out when I realized that you were the pizza girl in the Jonas Brothers music video. And she was like, I know, isn't that crazy? And like, they're having this like conversation in the trailer. And meanwhile, everyone's like exploding on the stage. And I was like, guys, like, shouldn't you be watching this? Cause there's a lot happening and you're you're missing it to talk about these things that we don't really care about like let's be honest we all want to get back to the drama so but i felt like the producers were like we need to put in some fun things like this is getting dark um and so then we move into the whole tom schwartz and raquel of it all and like what was going on there and you know everyone's kind of like yeah that was all made up and schwartz is like but didn't we have some kind of real chemistry and uh, you know, Raquel's like, yeah, I mean, we did, but, you know, and everyone's like, but you were already with Sandoval. So, like, that is very strange. And then she's like, yeah, but I was, like, always curious to make out with Schwartz since the beginning. And it's like, okay, well, so since the beginning when you were with James? So you've always been a bit of a whore? Like, I don't understand, like, she does, she keeps digging her own graves with some of these comments because it's like, you came on the show with a boyfriend and like you came on the show with James because you wanted to get on the show, but you apparently had a, a crush on, on Schwartz back then and wanted to make out with him. Like that's wild to me. Um, and then, but she's like, you know, after like the girls trip, I had closed the door on Schwartz. Um, when I saw like how mad Katie was and, you know, I had like said that that was the end and everyone's like, um, but then you kissed in Cancun. And she's like, well, I feel like Schwartz insinuated it. And I think she meant to say initiated it. Actually, I don't think that. I know that because she was using the wrong uh, way of saying insinuated. It's like, no, he didn't insinuate anything. You guys locked lips, um, but he may have initiated it. So, uh, you know, she's talking again. She's like, I closed the door and everyone's like, yeah. And then you open the door to Sandoval. 
even though that door had already been open. And I felt like we didn't really touch on the Schwartz stuff enough because there is so much there to unpack because it is really weird. The only, I mean, the best way, again, James being the, the voice of reason, apparently James is like, I just, this whole side of the stage is very incesty. Like it's, that's all it is. And I think that's just the truth is that like Sandoval and Schwartz love each other more than any other people that have ever been on this show. And that's the truth. They will, they will probably go to the grave with each other. Like, and that does, I think, cause for some of this strangeness that we are seeing kind of play out. But yeah, and then Schwartz did kind of like say, like at one point he did kind of admit, he was like, yeah, I was I was going pretty hard to like go along with the storyline, like once I knew kind of what, what was going on. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, they're going back on James about like how he was a cheater and, uh, you know, cheated on Raquel and Andy's like, did you cheat with other people? And he immediately denies it. And he's like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, speak on that. And they show all these clips of like all the different potential cheating rumors and all the different girls that claim that they were with James Kennedy back in the day. And let's be honest, like all of those things are probably like accurate and real. Um, but I think James's point is like, we've moved on and like, this isn't about me. Like we're not going to turn everything on me when we've got real drama that's unfolding in front of us right now. Like, why are we talking about five years ago? And so um, and I think I actually agree with him. Like, we've already covered those things at the reunion. He's already denied it. Why would he come out now and, like, say something that, like, outs and other than that, Andy asking that question, was hoping that maybe he would just, like, admit it. And then I think ultimately just it would hurt, like, it would hurt Raquel. And if that's the only reason that you're doing it is because you want to hurt her, it's like, why, why bother, you know? And so I didn't think that he needed to really um, do much and say much more than that. But they did flash to Ali and she's like, wait, what's happening? All these girls, he's cheating. And uh, <laughs> she's stressing out. And she's like, like, where th was this recently? And she was like, no, this is like four years ago. So um, she's like, oh, okay, good. Um, and then uh, one of the things that kind of comes out was Raquel's like, well, I just felt like, you know, Rick, like Lala didn't have any respect for me then. And Lala's like, I still don't like, and so that was accurate. Like that's the first time that you've said something honest. Um, and then we move into the open relationship lies of that came out in the season. And, you know, Ariana is like, we absolutely did not have an open relationship. That was never a thing. Andy asked at one point, like, does anyone think that Tom started this rumor to sort of cover for this narrative and the storyline of the leading up to the affair. And, you know, I think some people were like, yeah, probably. And Schwartz is like, yeah, there was like an open relationship rumor, like back in the day that like, that there was a threesome with Billy Lee. And that was when their people started questioning. And then like, you know, Tom keeps going hard on like the fact that like, we only had sex once and then we stopped and like, it wasn't, it was like, it wasn't until later that it like picked back up again. And he's like really pushing that. He's like, it was only once. And then there was a long time before we ever like started again. And he's already told us that it's like, they had sex the first time in August. And then like it picked back up again in September. So it's not that long, but he is kind of trying to like push something there. And, you know, then I don't really understand what, what point he was trying to make, but he explained that he has a friend and he's like, when I'm single and when I've been single in the past, I have a friend that like we have sex and then, you know, we move on like nothing of it. And so it's like, we could have, like, I could have had sex with Raquel once and like never again. And like, just decided that was a, like, just going to be friendship after that because everyone could be like, you had already crossed that line. And I'm like, who is this friend that's like willing to have sex with you whenever you're single? Like, it's just, I don't know. That whole thing is like very strange, but then we finally get like an apology from Raquel, but it was very generic. It was clear that she had rehearsed it. She's like, you know, I'm very like, sorry for everything I did. And, you know, I really like, I, I mean, you're right. It's more than selfish. It's crazy. And I like hurt you and I never wanted to hurt you. And it was just, I was like, okay. And I felt even at one point she like, started talking like a robot because she was like trying to remember her next line. Um, 
And Andy's like, how did this, you know, get to this point? Like, you guys have sex once, and then how did it, like, transition? And she's like, I felt, like, seen and heard by Tom. And Ariana's like, and you didn't feel seen and heard from me by me because I literally was the person that you cried in my arms and, like, was there for you for everything. And she's like, I mean, I just, like, didn't, like, always tell Ariana everything. Like, I felt like I could tell Tom anything. And, uh, you know, she is just like, you are nothing. And she's like, you know, you're constantly hearing, like, what other people are saying to you, but I think it, like, doesn't resonate. And she's like, but I want this to resonate. You are nothing. And she keeps saying it over and over. Raquel walks off and tries to have, like, a big dramatic moment, but ultimately it's just like, I just need water. And then she walks right back on stage. Um, and then, like, we're back into this, like, Mistress Bimbo conversation where Raquel's, like, going at Lala and calling her Mistress Bimbo. And Tom's like, but a mistress is like when it's like an ongoing thing, not like a one-time thing. And it's like, he's again, pushing this like one-time thing, not, doesn't work. And Andy asks like, well, did you guys sleep together the night that you all lied about in the house? And he says, no. And Katie's like, well, Schwartz, like you weren't there. And he was like, no, because Schwartz was there. And Katie's like, no, Schwartz wasn't there because he had the dogs and he had to go home to the dogs. And that was sailed past. And Sandoval claims they never did it in their house. Um, and so we move from that. Uh, Schwartz is like, you know, they're, they're all going really hard on Sandoval and Raquel, of course. And Schwartz is like, you know, it's the, can we talk about the juxtaposition uh, I feel like he was reading a dictionary before he came out. And he's like, because everyone's like going hard on Tom. And he's like, and he's in the like worst time of his life. And he's like, but meanwhile, Ariana is in the worst time of her life. And the world is rallying around. And like, can't we talk about that? And, you know, it's, it was, I, I think Tom was trying to defend Sandoval in that moment. But what it ended up doing is Ariana broke down and she was like, yeah, the support of the world and these strangers and the friends around me and the people that have come to my side and my rescue are what kept me going. Like, she was like, I don't know what would have happened if not for that. And so, yeah, I'm like really grateful that the world has done that for me. And Sandoval kind of starts crying you know, who knows with this guy, he's such a narcissist that like what's real and what's not, but he's kind of trying to keep it together. And I'm thinking like, is he, cause I was like, well, I do kind of believe these tears. Like, it seems like he's kind of trying to hold back, but you know, they're just coming out. And I had this thought, I'm like, but is he actually crying because he's realizing like Ariana is killing it and his jealousy is what he's so sad about is that he's like, I can't like, he can't see that Ariana is on top of the fucking planet and he is literally the most hated person on the planet and i feel like that's really what he was crying about and then they talk about you know that they're continuing to kind of go down this timeline and they're like you know andy's asking about like you know you dressed up as raquel for halloween after you've slept with her and Ariana's like, yeah, I helped him i helped him get that outfit together and do all of these things and you know, Andy's talking about the lightning bolt necklace. And he's like, was that significant? And she was like, yes, it was significant about who Tom had become in my life. And um, so we, she confirms the lightning bolt stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, everybody, oh, what was one of the comments that came out was about like the only time that she's ever shown remorse and tears is when she lost her pageant. And when she was talking about how like her pageant days were over and um uh, like someone tried to like compare it to the pageant life and was like you like thought that this was like a pageant that you were gonna win and uh james is like oh no it's not a pageant because she doesn't win those um i thought that was kind of uh kind of good they got to um they said you know when after you slept with uh raquel did you sleep with anyone else and some of the people were throwing out like what about the girl in chicago what about this he's like no no he's denying all of those things which all of that's probably true and then uh ariana's like well actually none of those girls matter because yes you did sleep with someone after raquel and it was me and his response was yeah she kept her t-shirt on it was really hot cringe everybody on the stage was like and even schwartz it was like schwartz in that moment gave up on sandoval 
he was like, oh God, you can't say that. And Schwar and Sa the irony is that Sandoval apologized to Schwartz, not to Ariana for the comment. He apologized to Schwartz and was like, I'm sorry, man. You know, like, and Schwartz is like, just sitting there devastated that he just said that because he knows like that was an insane comment. And so moving along, we get into the Rachel versus Raquel and, you know, Andy's like, after all of this came out, people started calling you Rachel, your real name. Um, and, you know, tell us a little bit about it. And she was like, well, like when I was in school, um, there was another Rachel. And so I just started going by Raquel and he, but then we learned that like her parents call her Rachel, her friends call her Raquel and Ariana's like, so we're going to call you Rachel cause you have no more friends. So the only people that call you anything are your parents, which is Rachel. And she tries to like go after Lala and is like, no, it's just my nickname, like Lala. And actually she doesn't say nickname. That's what Lala responds with. And Lala's like, um, yeah, no, Lala is a nickname of, uh, of Lauren. And she's like, what you're doing is you changed your actual, your actual name. If your name legally was Raquel and people called you Rocky, that would be your nickname. She's like, but changing your name from Rachel to Raquel is not the same thing as Lala. So don't come for me. And so she, she, um, you know, put, put her, put her down. Um, we, Andy's trying to get at the St. Louis trip in December that happened. And he's like, so did your parents ever meet, uh, Raquel? And she, he, she had like kind of said, no, Sandoval's like, yes, my parents knew, or maybe he said that his mom knew about the affair and was like, she, he didn't say that she was unhappy. He said she was surprised. Um, and you know, they, and Andy's like, well, when did they meet Raquel? And he said it was when they came to LA and for some Schwartz and Sandy's event, they met Raquel. And at that time, his mom knew, but they never, he, Andy didn't push on the St. Louis trip. He was like, yeah, I mean, we're not going to go there, I guess. And, um, he asks both of them, you know, if they're in love and Raquel said yes instantly. And they ask Sandoval and he like, can't answer. He's like given a lot of dr drama and, you know, looking at Ariana and he's like, I mean, I'm sorry, but, but yes, yes, I did. I did. And Andy's like, well, where are we going to be in a year from now? And, uh, neither one. They're like, we don't know. Like we got to let all this play out. We got to see what happens. But I love James is like, uh, they're going to be in a shit house and it's going to be a house made of poop. And, uh, yeah, both of them poo poo heads. <laughs> <It's> like. <laughs> And Elisa's like, oh, oh, stop it, James. You're just slowing us down. We're going to be here all night with these comments. Like, it's so good. It's like, but Lisa, we need these comments. Like, this is what I live for. I, I mean, this is what gets me up at six in the morning to watch this on Peacock. Like, I, I need it. Um, And so they kind of end there, uh, you know, Andy's like, we got to do the do -si do We're going to bring Sheena back out to have final thoughts. Um you know, any last things from Raquel, it was, it was pointless stuff. She walks off, they take a break. Uh, Tom goes into the dressing room. We see, uh, Tom and Raquel backstage, you know, he's like, Oh, you did great. You're handling it way better than me. And then she's like sitting on this couch and she's like, I just like, I know that this like all really sucks. And like, I'm really starting to see like all of seeing it all together and like having this conversation of the timelines it's like it's really impacting me and i'm realizing like how bad it was and i'm like so remorseful for all the things and she's like fake crying and like there wasn't a tear that came out of her face and it was just so inauthentic and then like they're trying to like laugh together and like have their moment of like they just think we're like pathological liars and it's the producer walks in and is like, okay, Raquel, like due to your restraining order, you got to get out of here. And you can just tell he's like, this is what you're doing. So stop trying to get camera time and a funny moment. Cause like, you got to go. We're having to like do this whole thing because of you. So time to go. So he kicks her out. We don't see her again. Um, meanwhile, on the stage, everyone's waiting for Sandoval and Lisa to come back. And, um, I think it was Alala had asked Ariana, like, you know, what would you have done if he had come to you and said, I had an emotional affair. I'm having an emotional affair with Raquel. I'm having these feelings. 
Ariana's like, I would have given him two choices, never see her again or break up with that, with me and pursue it. And she's like, but would you have been mad? And she's like, not as mad as I am now. I think eventually I would have gotten over it. But she's like, but I don't even know that because she's like, honestly, you don't do that to friends. Um, and uh, I, uh, she was just like, you know, I don't, I, you don't include the friends. And I'm thinking like, and Katie's sitting there looking at Schwartz and it's like, I'm realizing we're about to end this freaking uh, reunion. And we really never got into the whole thing about how Katie was the victim of all of this stuff. That she ultimately was so upset about Schwartz going after the friend. And the fact that like, she is the one that's like kind of just like, no one's focused on the fact that Katie, all this shit happened to her. And, I was like, oh my God. And it's like a little hypocritical of Ariana to say, like, you don't go for friends because she was sort of defending Raquel in all the Tom Schwartz stuff. And it's like, well, you know, if that's what they're doing and it's like, whatever, like she never uh, like put her stamp on it, but she was definitely not like pissed, you know? And it's, it feels a little hypocritical and we never got into that in the reunion. And I'm a little disappointed that we didn't go there. Um, but everyone's like, okay, let's like get this reunion over with. Like, where is everyone? Get Sandoval out here. And then uh, Andy's like, well, Lisa's gone too. And we find out that Lisa is backstage. She's prepping Tom and saying like, you haven't had your emotional moment yet. And you need to, if you like my British accent, it's almost as good as Sandoval's. Um, she's like, you, you need to have this moment. Like, this is your moment to like show the world and show these people sitting there that you have any emotion in this. So it's like, she's she literally handed him a cue card and was like, you need to go on stage and cry and like to finish this out because we're going to conclude and you're going to look bad. And his response is, I'm not a serial killer, dude. Yeah. The guy is potentially a serial killer. And I think Lala describes it best. He is dangerous. It's crazy. So we're back on stage and he's like, I want final thoughts from everyone. You know, he's trying to kind of wrap everyone's story. He's like, Sheena, you guys going to have a baby? She's like, not anytime soon. James, what's going on with you? I'm going to continue DJing. He asked Schwartz if he's going to get married again. He's like, no, probably not, but I'll, I'll fall in love many times. Um, you know, Katie's in question to you. She wants to, you know, she's like, I don't know about getting married. I don't really think I want kids. I'll probably be a cool aunt. I might live like overseas and just have like hot young guys, like one every month. Um, and then we moved to uh, Sandoval. And I was like, that's weird. Why are we saving Lala? And Sandoval starts his tears instantly. And it's like, I can't buy it because you were just handed the cue card from Lisa. There's, an, I don't believe this. And so she, he starts his thing. I'll always love Ariana. I've loved her more than anything. I know that I messed up, but I'm human too. And by the way, an apology should never say the word but. And so he failed there, but he's like, I will always be cheering her on from the side. Andy goes to Ariana, what about you? And she's like, I will not forgive him and I will not be cheering him on from afar. And that was her update. And then I realized like we go to wrap up and uh, Lisa says her piece and Andy's like, all right, well, let's take a cast photo. And it's like, why didn't we get an update about Lala? Like, I feel like she obviously they went to her. I'm just curious what she said because they must have pulled it out. And so now I'm like, I want that footage because something was bad enough that they needed to pull it out. And I wonder if it's about Randall, but yeah, or they skipped her. I don't know. Um, but they wrap up. Everyone's like, wow, that was a cold ending. Then we get, everyone leaves, everyone's packing. They all leave. They part ways. Then we get the six days later, um, Raquel sits down for her final interview for the Scandaval episode. So all the, the talking head shots from the Scandaval episode, this is the interview. And she's like, I am tired of lying. And they're like, well, tell us everything. And even after that, she lied so many times. It was like, it was a little diabolical watching her. And the producer was like calling her out and he's like, your face is saying one thing, but your words are another. And she's like, I'm, and she breaks down and she's like, I'm just so tired of lying and being deceitful. And so in that moment we learn, and you know, she's like it, the timeline of it all is very different than what we've said. And 
and they're like, you know, why? And she's like, well, Sandoval feels like it would be less hurtful to lie. And if we didn't like say that, which is bullshit because he just doesn't want to look worse than he is. It has, it's more hurtful to him, not to anyone else. And so we learn that the set, so they hooked up the first time as, as we thought a lot of people thought that the, the timeline was going to go way back. Um, but she talks about the first time was the time after see you next Tuesday that we all have been talking about. But she says the second time was in Mexico at Sheena's wedding. And she tells the whole story of how it happened. And then, uh, you know, the producers are like, so did you guys have sex multiple times in Mexico? And she was like, yes. And then they're like, so did you meet the, uh, his mom? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, where did you meet the mom? And she's like, oh, in LA. And he's like, I feel like you're lying about that. And she was like, I don't, I know, like that's, that's it. And then she at one point also like said that she brought it to Tom and was like, maybe we could be in a thruple with um, Ariana. And he turned that down. He was like, she'll never go for that. And she's like, you know, I'm, I was in love with Tom Sandoval and I love Ariana. And so I just thought like, maybe that was an option, but he took that off the plate. And which is, I mean, all of all for thruples, but like the, that's where her mind is going. Like, Hey, we've already been having a, an affair. So maybe Ariana will just join it. Like it's wild. And then the producers push again on the like St. Louis trip. And she's like, and they're like, so you never went to St. Louis in December. And she's like, Nope. And they, they cut, they cut to the photo of them in St. Louis, December 29th. And they're like, you're you seem like you're not willing to say it but your face is again like telling something different and she's like well he asked me not to disclose this information and there's so much that like we haven't said and they're like so you even lied about things at the reunion and she's like yeah and so she has a full breakdown she's like but i can't keep it in anymore so she confirms that yes they went to st louis to visit the parents in december she admits that the night that they claim they didn't have sex that she you know was late to sir the next day she admits that that night they also did and she was like i it's like so horrible and the producers are like i mean why are you keeping this part in when you've like revealed so much and you want to tell the truth but then like you're not you're not telling the truth and uh she's like because it's so horrible to think that like while Ariana is away, we're having sex in her house. And that is so horrible because she's also like, the reason she's away is because she's at a funeral. And, you know, she's clearly like very distraught over all of that. And, you know, they push and push and push. And, you know, she just never actually says like, yes, it happened. But she all but said yes. So that was our, I mean, it was not the reveal that that we've been waiting for for three months. I think like they overhyped that and hopefully, you know, the executive producer who said that in the interview, like I hope that he has a bit, he has some, some learnings from this of like, okay, I probably shouldn't have like teased that so much. Um, but yeah, they, uh, that was the, that was the reveal that we've been waiting for. They did have Lala on watch what happens live and she, you know, kind of reacted and she was like, I don't really know how I feel after that. Like, She's like, I watched this person who had no emotion and no empathy all this time, which I thought was wild. And now I'm wondering, like, do I feel anything? Because now I'm seeing her break down and she's like been keeping all of these lies for Tom Sandoval. So it's like, is everyone going to like take Raquel back? I don't know. I, I don't think Ariana is. And hopefully the other girls aren't. But there is clearly some mental stuff going on with Raquel. And so if she is truly in a mental facility right now, as she claims, or as her family is claiming, that is probably the best thing because like, she is really, she's got some things to work through. Um, but yeah, that's that. I mean, Sandoval comes out looking like a horrible snake and, you know, I, I hope that he, you know, fucks himself with a fucking cheese grater. So I don't know what else to say guys. We have reached the conclusion. This is the end of our three-part Vanderpump Rules reunion special episodes, three weeks of talking about the Scandaval, and I want to just talk about it for three more, but we have sadly come to the end. 
But it's not sad because we've got new episodes of the OC, we've got an explosive Jersey reunion, and uh, we are finally getting to the end of this uh, this kind of season of life on Bravo. And so we're about to bring all new shows um, and you can follow those every Monday on the Bravo breakdowns on the gist. Um, and of course, the next week we'll be back with a very special interview. Um, and we're going to be deep diving on the uh, OC premiere and all things housewives um, with a very special guest. I'm going to kind of leave it at that as my cliffhanger for this episode, but please come back and don't forget rate and subscribe so that you never miss the episodes as they come out. And um, thank you guys so much for listening. If you watched last night and you have thoughts, hit me up on socials. I'm at CM Vetrano on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Just slide right into those DMs. Let me know your thoughts. And until next time, it's Chris Vetrano signing off. Bye.